and welcome to today's collective worship. The Lord be with you. And also with you. My name is Rev Matt. And I'm Emily and we are so glad that you can join us today for our final instalment on... Valiant, Valiant Values. Values. Valiant Values. Now, Matt, I wonder, can you remember all the different Valiant Values that we have done in this series? Okay, I'm going to have to think back over the, the whole term. So, we started with faith, yep. then hope, yep. then love, mm -hmm. then patience, which I wasn't very good at, nope. and then perseverance, and then today we're on a new one, which is joy. Yeah, that's right. We are looking at joy, and the kind of joy that came at Easter. Now joy is a gift from God and something that we can all experience. We can find joy in the really small things and in the really big things. Okay, Emily, uh, what in the last 24 hours has brought you most joy? Ooh, um, I had a really nice bath, which was really relaxing. So Lovely, lots of joy. nice. Okay, uh, what about you at home and at school? What in the last 24 hours has brought you the most joy? Now, Matt, I know something that gives you lots of joy. Yes, cake? Not cake. I think it's time to play a game. I love a game. That's a good idea. Okay. Now, Matt, it is time for our excellent game. Cracking. I know, but this is no yoke. All oh, white. Let's crack on. <laughs> so this exciting game is what we're going to do is we're going to guess whether these eggs are raw or cooked. How are we going to do that? Well, we are going to find out by cracking them against Matt's head. Yes! <laughs> so what I'd like you to do is stand up and then I want you to decide on each one, they've got numbers on them. Are they raw or are they cooked? And if you get it right, stay standing and we'll see at the end who is the winner. Brilliant, okay, so uh, let's get moving um, and have a smashing good time. So we're gonna start with egg number one. Do you think it's raw or do you think it's cooked? Okay, number one, here we go, ready? Cooked or raw? It was raw. Okay, well done if you got that right. Okay, Emily, number two. Number two, is it cooked or is it raw? Let's okay. see. Here we go, ready? Cooked or raw? Oh, <laughs> that, that one is cooked. <laughs> <laughs> number three. Okay, number three. People are still stuck up, Matt. I know, I don't know. Okay, number three. Is it cooked or is it raw? Are we ready? I'm ready. One, two, three. Oh, that's a cooked one. It's a cooked egg. Oh, you're enjoying this, aren't you, Emily? This is so exciting. Okay. <laughs> all white, all white. Okay, number four. Number four. Is it cooked or is it raw? Oh, that one's also cooked. That's a cooked egg. Well done if you got that right. Stay standing. You got it wrong. Sit down. Okay, on to number five now. Five. Okay, if you're still standing, I'm very impressed. Okay, number five. Cooked. Or raw. Make your decisions. Oh, that's a cooked one. <laughs> last one. Yeah. Okay, last one. Let's is see. it cooked or is it raw? Oh, it's raw. 
Well done, if you're still standing, you would have got six right. That was a, a smashing game, absolutely cracking. Goodness, Emily, I feel a bit scrambled after all of that. <laughs> cracking, wasn't it? It was, it really was. <laughs> Now we're going to move on to a time of worship and this song is called The Joy of the Lord is My Strength and it's all about how we can be strong when we look to God to give us joy no matter what is happening in our lives. So I think we should go over to the church mouse to learn some actions. Yeah. So I've got the church mouse with me again. Hi church mouse. And we are going to learn the actions to the joy of the Lord. Are you ready church mouse? Are you ready in your classrooms? Here we go. So we start with the joy of the Lord is my strength, with big muscles. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In the darkness, I'll dance. In the shadows, I will sing. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Perfect, high five church mouse. Well done. Joy of the Lord 
This is Jesus. Hey -o! Who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. Judas, one of Jesus' disciples, agreed to betray Jesus. Ah, come in, come in. And give him over to the religious leaders for some money. Jesus was in a garden praying, and Judas showed the man who Jesus was. Jesus was arrested and taken to the rulers of the land so that they could decide what to do with him. Jesus was presented before the high council, and they asked him if he was the Messiah, the Savior of the Jews. They asked him if he was claiming to be the Son of God. You say that I am. <laughs> and the council was furious, and they shouted that Jesus was guilty, and he deserves to die. So they took Jesus before the Roman ruler Pilate, and he heard the case against Jesus. Pilate didn't think that Jesus had done anything wrong. Huh, seems okay to me. They found him to be innocent, so Pilate said that he would punish Jesus and then release him. What? But the crowd kept screaming louder and louder, crucify him, we want him dead. And because of the pressure of the crowd, Pilate turned Jesus over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. Jesus was hurt and spit on, his clothes were torn and taken from him, and a crown made out of thorns was put on his head. He was beaten so badly that he could barely stand on his own, and then he was forced to carry his cross so far up a mountain that he needed help because he could not do it on his own. Once Jesus made it to the place where he would be crucified, called the skull, the soldiers around him nailed him to the cross and waited for him to die. While Jesus was hanging on the cross, many people shouted to him, If you really are the Son of God, save yourself from the cross. But Jesus knew he had to die to forgive his people for their sins. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land. Three hours later, Jesus took his last breath and finally died. At that very moment, the curtain in the temple that separated the priests from God's holy place tore in two. A soldier watching the whole thing said, This man truly was the Son of God. Then a righteous man named Joseph came and placed Jesus' body in a tomb. Three days passed and it seemed that there was no hope. But very early on Sunday morning, the woman who cared for Jesus went to go visit his body and found that his tomb was empty and that he was no longer there. Ah! Don't be afraid said an angel. He is not here. He is risen. At this, the woman remembered that Jesus had told them that he would rise again on the third day and ran to go tell the disciples what they had seen and heard. Huh? hey -oh. ah! And then for the next 40 days, Jesus appeared to his disciples and many others and showed them that he was alive and well. He taught them that what he did was the only way that they could be forgiven and be with God forever. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Have you ever tried to undo something that's gone wrong? Perhaps we'd like to turn into a superhero so that we can turn back time and stop bad things happening. Some things, once they're broken, can be impossible to fix. And that can leave us feeling pretty Sad.
Ugh. Perhaps we break a friendship by saying something that is untrue or unfair. Or break someone's heart by going behind their back or gossiping about them. Or maybe someone in our lives gets broken. Maybe they get hurt or a relationship gets broken or they get ill or we lose someone that we really love. Life can be pretty broken. It can be pretty messy. Towards the end of Holy Week is Good Friday. It marks the day when Jesus was taken outside of the city and put on a cross on the city rubbish dump. It was a dark and painful day. It was broken and it was messy. Jesus' friends, the disciples, they'd run away. They'd abandoned Jesus. Their friendship was broken. Jesus' mother, Mary, watching Jesus die on the cross, her heart was breaking. She too was broken. Jesus, the Son of God, dying on a cross, was broken. Not very hopeful news, not a very good Friday. That was until the third day after his crucifixion when Mary and Mary went to visit the tomb of Jesus, went to visit the grave where they expected to find his body. It says in the Bible in Matthew 28 that an angel rolled back the heavy stone that was covering the tomb and Mary and Mary went to look at what was inside. What did they expect to find? Maybe something that was messy, maybe something that was broken. But inside this tomb, they found absolutely nothing. There was nothing there, not what they were expecting. It says in Matthew 28, the angel who was there, who'd rolled away the stone said, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy. And they went on to meet Jesus. The joy they experienced did not come because they were able to turn time around, but because something new had happened out of the mess and the brokenness. Joy exists because we have a hope beyond what is messy and beyond what is broken. Here are three ways that you can have the joy that we experience at Easter. Firstly, we can know joy because we are loved and we are forgiven. The second way we can have joy is by holding on to God's great promises. And thirdly, we can know joy because a friendship with Jesus changes us and makes us new. So whatever you're going through right now, whether things are really good or whether you're feeling hurting and broken, remember that Jesus went there first. From his brokenness on that cross, joy came. And it's a joy that we can all share today as we look into that empty tomb and discover that Jesus is alive and that he makes all things new. You know, this amazing message of joy is for every single one of us. We're all included. So we're going to um, say a prayer and if you'd like to, you can join in with us as well. And we're going to start just by saying sorry for the things that we've done that are a bit broken. And uh, we're going to sort of pretend to wash our hands. My hands got really covered in egg earlier. I had to go and wash them. And as we do this action, I'm going to pray. Lord Jesus, we want to say sorry for the things that we've done that have hurt others hurt you and hurt ourselves, things that are, are broken and a bit messy. Lord Jesus, just bring those things to mind now and say we're sorry for those things. Would you forgive us and set us free? Amen. 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 And now we're going to ask for the Holy Spirit to come and fill us with joy. Now when we ask the Holy Spirit to come, he comes. And a way and a sign that we can show that we want to receive is by putting our hands out like this. So let's pray. Come Holy Spirit, we pray that you would come and fill us with joy today, no matter what is going on. Amen.
Well, we hope that you have found joy today as we have been looking at joy in the final part of our series on Valiant Values. We've had an absolutely cracking time and it's been brilliant being with you. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us and we really look forward to seeing you again next time. But let's just finish uh, with a blessing. So may the Lord bless you and watch over you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you peace. Amen. 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 We really hope you have an excellent Easter. It's going to be all white. It's going to be cracking. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.